Celtic didn't get Eddie Howe. I believe you were uh, talking at length about this yesterday. What was your b- before we get to who yes. might be next in the list? Briefly, what was your take on that? That it became so public, everybody thought it was a matter of time they will announce it. Last week yeah. was when they were going to announce it. Apparently, I think um, I think they've done themselves a favour. He doesn't want the job. Mm. And he needs convincing over two and a half months, and you shouldn't bloody well want him there. Celtic's a big job. I know it's got its challenges, and I know that I'm not the greatest admirer of the Scottish League ad infinitum. Yeah. But Scot- Scot- Scotland's two biggest sides, Celtic and Rangers, are bloody big jobs. And Eddie Howe had an opportunity there. And no, he can't have his own director of football. So, with the best one in the world, I think it's actually worked out that whoever they appoint will be someone that wants the job rather than someone that thinks that he's perhaps doing them a favour. Well, I must admit, I got a call the other day from somebody saying that apparently the individual they now turned their attention to is Ange Postacoglu. Yep. I was like, uh huh, who is that? Now, of course, uh, this man uh, has worked and managed in Australia, South Melbourne, Brisbane Roar, the Australian under 17s, 20s, the Australian national team. He's now with Yokohama Marinos in um, Japan. But really, who is he? So this morning, uh, we got in touch with Tom Smithies, who is a former football editor of the Sydney Daily Telegraph. Tom works for a whole variety of people out there, is well-connected and knows Postacoglu, has dealt with him. And I said to him straight, all right, Tom, tell us about him. I've never heard of him. Give us an insight into Ange Postacoglu. He's a fascinating character, Jim. Very successful, but also very uncompromising. In fact, If there's one word I'd use about Ange, it's uncompromising. He was scarred by an experience um, early in his career. And uh, and ever since then, basically, he's done it his way. And he plays a very proactive, very attacking style of football. He's got absolute belief in his own methods, absolute belief in his ability to to make his players play in that way. And I have to say, he's he's delivered wherever he's been given time. He's delivered. He won uh, won championships in Australia. He won the Asian Cup with Australia, you know, which is our equivalent of the, the Euros. Um, and then, uh, then he qualified for a World Cup, walked away uh, having done so before the World Cup itself because he decided that he, you know, he didn't have the support of the Australian football public, went to Japan um, and, then, and, and has won the J-League playing this um, fantastic style of football. And, and they played a friendly against Manchester City last year and, and he got absolutely rave reviews from Pep Guardiola from the way that he was playing. Um, so it, it's it's going to be entertaining for gr- good reasons and bad. He doesn't love criticism. He's got, he's got a bit of a, a chip on his shoulder about Australians not being recognised, and um, and thinks that uh, you know if he'd been uh, maybe coaching a European team, he'd get more more sort of kudos if you like. And uh, he's he's but, but but equally, you know, he's a very civilised guy. He's he's, he's not a, a screamer and a shouter that likes to have a have a chat and uh, and always will engage. Um, and you know he's, he's I've written critical things about him in the past and we've always, you know, had a good good engagement afterwards. Um, but he will not bow to anybody. He'll do things his way and uh, it doesn't matter if he's not getting results. He won't change his style of play. We all know the cauldron that he's going to be going into if he gets the job at Celtic. Um, and it'll be fascinating to see whether if those result, results don't come quickly, he, he won't change, but it'll be fascinating to see, you know, how much Celtic hold their nerve Um, because there's obviously question marks from the Celtic faithful already over his proposed appointment. So in your view, Tom, this is a no-brainer. You you would say Celtic are absolutely right to be going for this guy. I think it's going to be fascinating from a a neutral observer's point of view. It's a no-brainer because it'll be entertaining whatever happens. I think that Ange deserves this chance. He has coached in all sorts of difficult circumstances. He, He is a terrific thinker about the game, but sometimes... You could argue that he, that he overthinks things, but he's absolutely determined that his view of football is it's a mission and he wants to change the way that people think about Australians and the way that people think about Australian football. As I said, utterly uncompromising. He, in the middle of a World Cup qualifying campaign where Australia was struggling a little, he changed the style of play completely, went to three at the back and it's sort of an inverse of the, uh, the, the sort of wet Tuesday at Stoke. He did it on a wet Thursday in Tehran. He, he changed the style of play completely and... Uh, Everyone said, this is crazy. You're in the middle of a World Cup qualifying campaign. This isn't the time to be doing it. And he said, that's the way I do things, like it or not. Whether Celtic are prepared to give him the the time it will take for his methods to be implemented and implanted in that team is a different question. So all in all, an uncompromising character uh, by the sounds of it, Tom, which makes me wonder, is he on a collision course with the Celtic fan base if they don't like his, his methods? Could he put the, the Scottish media's noses out of joint and not really give a damn about that? He doesn't sort of give a damn really about anything other than the mission that he's on. 
Um, he won't willfully go out of his way to put people's noses out of joint, but he will have a style of play that he wants. And he'll make that clear to Celtic. His track record speaks for itself. I've gone into clubs. I've got them to play a certain way. It has been successful, but it doesn't happen overnight. So they have to buy into that vision if they're going to give him the job. And the, the really fascinating thing is he doesn't tend to do a huge amount of hands-on coaching. Certainly with the Socceroos, he watched and he spoke to the players, but he had assistants who did the actual drills. But he just seemed to get inside the heads of players and, and convince them that they could, could do things. And, uh, and that, that's served him well so far. Um, whether he can do it in that you know, very different environment with, with the pressure that every previous Celtic manager tells him, you don't understand it till you've had it. Well, that's the, uh, that's the outstanding question. And I, I'd, I'd love to see how he fares because um, I think there are some very good young managers here. And uh, I think that if, if Andrew is successful, it might open some doors to uh, some other guys. Tom, a final question. I think Celtic fans here will be hanging on your every word. If he gets the job, is Posteglu the man to wrench the title back off Rangers and Gerrard? Personally, I think that if you put a bit of pressure on Steven Gerrard, he's still very inexperienced as a coach. You know, it'd be very interesting to see if Celtic did start well. It would be interesting to see how Rangers, Rangers respond. It, 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 you know, we know it's pretty much going to come down to those two. Um, and he's very good at keeping his nerve in a crisis. The players and the coaches, if he gets the job, will find that he, he has a very sort of uh, distant style. He likes to keep players at arm's length, but he's very good in, a, in, in keeping calm in, in, under pressure. If things went well and uh, he started off with some good results, it would be really fascinating to see how Rangers cope with, um, with the pressure because they, they've had one good year after not having um, a good time for quite a long time. So it would be very interesting to see who'd keep the nerve most, Stephen Gerrard or Ange Postacoglu. That was Tom Smithies, uh, the former football editor of the Sydney Telegraph. He, he, d- he does a lot of work for a, a whole bunch of different outlets out there. Uh, and Simon, you know, to use one of your phrases, Tom Smithies, he doesn't have a particular dog in this fight. Yeah. In other words, he doesn't need to verbally represent yeah. uh, Postacoglu in, in such glowing terms. But by God, some of the things he said made me think, really? Yeah. This is a guy who keeps his nerve in a crisis. Right, for a start, we like the sounds of that. Yeah. It depends on the nature of the crisis and the scale of it. Yes. He'd certainly find himself in a bit of a crisis if he comes over here and it's Celtic yeah. and Neil Rangers three after 25 minutes. If, if we judge but, every book by its cover, right. a lot of books we wouldn't buy, right. if you look at the fact that he's managed Brisbane Raw and Melbourne Victory and Australia, and he hasn't had an auspicious time of Australia. If you look at the win records of a lot of managers that have managed Australia, whether it's Terry Venables or it's Gus Hiddink or it's other managers that we can go down the list and look at uh, that have all got a more impressive win record than he has with the national national side. Now, you could say that Venables and people like that had the Mark Vadukas and the, the, the cream of the Australian crop, and maybe that isn't quite as prevalent. So if we judge this book by its cover, we're going to say, wow, mate. This is vastly different from managing in Japan and managing Brisbane Raw. I spent time in Australia. I was going to buy an Australian mobile phone business. I tried to buy Northern Spirit, which was an Australian team in Sydney. The standard of football wasn't great. Tony Popovich was the Australian captain that played for me at Palace. I like Antipodeans. I think they've got a real resilience and a real character and a real substance about them. Um, And... This is an individual, if you listen to what's being said by that journalist, that has all the attributes that you'd expect to have in a manager. You want a manager, what do you want? Someone's got forthright, someone that can have have the strength of his own thinking, someone that doesn't back down. These are all the things that every manager would say they have, Mm. right? But then you take them out and you stick them into the cauldron that is Celtic with the expectation... Forget about what Stephen Gerrard's going to do. That's for the birds, right? That little observation about whether Stephen Gerrard, but, but, but Stephen Gerrard will fold if the pressure gets put on him. We, you know what? He's just won the league. He's in good nick right now. So he will find himself at the level he finds himself at. This guy stepping into the expectation level that has seen off big managers is a different dynamic for him. And, and his fortitude and his uncompromising nature, I noticed that they said that he doesn't like criticism, or here it comes, son, because you're going to get loads of it at Celtic if you don't hit the ground running, and there's no reason to, sus- to, sus- to suspect that you won't have some travails and mm. some troubles. Mm. 